Hockey Hall of Famer, Stanley Cup champion, and current president of the LA Kings. Luke, thanks so much for joining us. Look, we as hockey fans love behind the glass, the all-access peek behind the doors of what we don't get to see on a daily basis. What does the team, what do the players feel like having the cameras kind of following along uh, every step of the way here? Hey, you know, I think it's a great thing for the fans. It's one of those things like a lot of times people don't really see exactly what's going on behind the scene. And when you have an opportunity to see that, it makes it very interesting. There's so many of those shows now. But like as an organization to do, to show, to have a, an opportunity to show your culture and what you stand for and so forth, I, I do think it's a great thing. And at the end of the day, we are in the entertainment business, and that's it, that's part of it. And I think it's a great thing. Luke, picking up on that, you know, our sport has always had that. It's been a little bit kind of behind closed doors, been really kind of uh, keeping things close to the vest. So this is a real, uh, it's a bold move for the NHL, and some clubs do it better than others. But yeah. the Kings organization, for example, how big an accommodation is that to let the fans behind the curtain and, have a, and get a good sense of how, how the game is played at the cultural level? I think it's it's uh, for us as an organization. What we're trying to do is we're trying to work free the show with the NHL and to say, okay, let's. There's a, there's a few things that are important to us. Like example, like uh, we've been really big on developing hockey in Southern California on the on the west west coast in in the United States. So we'd like to have an opportunity to talk about that. To see what our guys do. They go out in the community. And they they do some work. As far as being in the locker room. I think it's great, but at the same time, I understand you're there to work and everything. So it it, yeah. it becomes too much when the camera's always there. You know, we were Stu, we we didn't like it. We would change the way we were. So we're mm -hmm. trying to make it that guys are able to really be themselves, you know, inside of, of what they're doing day in and day out. Well, the cameras are going to follow you guys a long way as you head overseas to Australia for a couple of uh, Global Series games against the Coyotes coming up next week in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, what yeah. is that going to be like from your perspective? I know you were saying you were going to board that bird and fly uh, with the team over there. What's that going to yeah. be like? Yeah, we're leaving this Saturday. <laughs> it's I think it's a, it's a great experience for the players. I mean, we're like the union and the league has done a tremendous job at setting up the trip where it's a fun trip for the players, even though everybody's going there for work. But but at the same time, if you're going to go all the way there, you have to enjoy it. And uh, the fact that uh, we're starting like I think five days earlier than everyone else will give us a chance to rest. Will give us a chance to have the guys have some time off that they can really enjoy going there. And it's one of those that when you finish playing and you're 10 years after you retire and you, you sit down and you go, you know, that was pretty cool. We got to go to Australia to play a couple of hockey games mm -hmm. when we were just kids and playing the same game that we love so much. And that's kind of the way I feel about it. And I think for us as a league to have the opportunity to go there and to share our game with the world and share our game with people over there. I mean, we've already, we've had numerous meetings with them. The NFL is there. The NBA is there. It's time for us to go. We were talking, Luke, before we came on camera, going back to 2007, your Kings opened up the season with against your Pacific Division rivals, the Ducks, way yeah. back when, and you've done it several yeah. times since then. It really seems to me, is this kind of an opportunity well-placed, uh, like from the team's benefit, kind of a, uh, a, an opportunity to bond as a team because it's placed there at an early part of your schedule? I think so. I think it's it gives an opportunity. Like a lot of time, you got new players or some young kids, and it gives everybody's together right away. And and the way our world is now, like you you fly in, you, you get out of town right away, and you don't really have time to get the team together. So to have like a four or five days in a, on in a new area where you got all the players, I really do believe it makes your team better for for the longer stretch and uh, th that's what I think those are those are opportunities you know people talk about like how we will do it like for the end of the season and so forth and I look at it in a few different ways there's only 80 days of the year you got to get your rest to get ready for the game and that's the way I felt as a player and if you're not willing to do that you're probably doing the wrong thing and then there's another stat that's very interesting there was a span of four years I think it was a from 2008 till 2012, when we won, the every team that started in Europe ended up winning the Stanley Cup. Wow! So the whole tired thing is is actually a myth. <laughs>
start a new trend. The, the there team you go. that goes to Australia. Might want to keep that to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Keep that to yourself and keep as many of these games as you can in house. I like that. Exactly. I want to go. It was uh, it was uh, Detroit, Pittsburgh. Uh, I think it was Chicago. Yeah. And I think it was us. That's very interesting. Good like things come to those girl. who travel, I guess. <laughs> uh, speaking of traveling, you mentioned new additions in Pierre-Luc Dubois, maybe the latest addition to the L.A. Kings. A couple of stops now on his NHL career journey. Why do you think L.A. is going to be a good fit for him? I mean, for us, the way we look at it, he's coming to our, our roster and he, he he's going to fit a hole. Like a, we really feel we're going to be really strong at center, like one, two, three with him, Philip Deneau and Kopi. Uh and we know he's excited to come to us, and he's got an opportunity to learn from two of the best in the game. And also, we like the edge that he brings to his game. He, he, he's a physical player. He uh, he elevates his game in big moments. And, and we kind of, you know, the last couple of years, not going by the first round, we felt adding an extra guy like that with his type of character is really going to help us uh, in, in a big moment. You know, we're talking about after Christmas and on. Lucky, I remember we were talking a couple of summers ago. I believe it was the summer the Kings went out and acquired a Victor Arvidsson, and this really stuck with me. Arvidsson for you is a transaction where you're trying to bring some stability to your lineup so that your younger guys can develop. They can grow within the system. Uh, the yeah. question I have for you is Quinton Byfield, is he kind of the beneficiary of that move? And is he kind of at that stage today? He seems like he's on the brink of some really special things. He's the beneficiary in a way that he's learning exactly what it takes to win in the NHL. Like there, there's ways like you can have success in the NHL, but to help win. And we're talking about trying to win the last game of the season. And it's mm -hmm. a hard thing to do. So I love the fact that Quinton, even though like I'm sure as a player, you always want to establish yourself right away and so forth. Last year, he started playing with Kopi and, and Adrian Kempe. And Kopi loves to play with, with, with Q because Q is, he forechecks real well. He comes yeah. back, he plays a 200 foot game, and he's learning from, from, uh, from Anze. And I, we really believe over time, if you're trying to build a team to win the Stanley Cup, you need guys like that that give in every, everything they have every game. And he, he, he certainly, he's always done that, but I think he's learning the, the, the game inside the game that I think is going to help us for the future. Things really get going tomorrow out in L.A. with the uh, rookie camp opening up officially. Is there a guy that we as fans should keep an eye on that might be able to either crack the lineup or make some noise this year? Well, you know, obviously Jordan Spence, what he's done in the minors, he's been one of the best defensemen there. He's done real well. Brent Clark, uh, he's one of those kids that like, uh, when he went back in junior last year, played real well for Team Canada, then uh, – he did one of those things when you're a player, and you might not agree when you get sent down and sent back, but some guys choose to not do anything about it. Some of the guys will choose to say, I'll show you guys you you know what I can do. And he, he went out, he was the, the top uh, scorer in all defensemen in Canada. We, we're really happy with, with what he's done so far. For And, he, you know, we're going to definitely look at him. And uh, to Tobias Bjornford on defense, he, he's already he's had a few games in the NHL, but he's been up and down. But this is definitely a big camp for him. Well, Luke, we appreciate uh, a few minutes of your time. We know you're a busy man. And uh, we look forward to watching your team on the ice, uh, especially land down under. So enjoy the travel to Australia coming up in a couple of days.